Now, why is it resume and not resume? And yet it's still spelled the same way. Don't know. Ms. Womb. Ms. Womb. Ms. Womb. Ms. Womb. Ms. Womb. Ms. Womb. Welcome to Table Talk, the show about beer, board games, and everything else. I'm Rich. And I'm Alex. And this month, we've been talking about baseball. That's right. We've been talking about baseball. We've been talking about our favorite baseball things, favorite baseball stadiums, favorite baseball teams, favorite baseball players. That, that was last week's episode. This is uh, the final week, week four. Um, so we're going we're gonna to finish out the, the whole baseball series by... Talking about our favorite, one of our favorite topics. If we're not talking about beer and we're not talking about board games, we're usually talking about movies. <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk about uh, our favorite, I guess not favorite, but what we what we consider the best baseball movies and maybe one or two of baseball movies that we feel like maybe fell short <laughs> of, of, of committed an error. Yeah, an error. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Alex, since you're the 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 the, the baseball um, connoisseur, <laughs> is that the right word? Baseball, the baseball fan out of the two of us, I'll we'll let you lead with what you th- what you feel like is is one of the best baseball movies. Make it good. It's got to be good. Well, what do you think is the a, best baseball movie. movie? I mean, I well, we'll believe... list, let's, let's start with what, what's at the top of your list. Like, if you're going to talk about a baseball movie, what's what's what are we going to talk about? If it's a tie, uh, it can be a tie. All right. So the top, absolute top of my list, without a doubt, is Field of Dreams by far. Okay. I think that, right. that that captures the American pastime feel. I mean, it's mm-hmm. literally about people from the past. Um, so it is yeah. pastime. Um, <laughs> I I think that it is a it is one of the few movies about baseball that I think does a good job in giving good uh subject matter to the fact that baseball is a generational game mm. like it's something that is taught that is passed from you know father to son mother to daughter mother to mm-hmm. son father to daughter you know it, it's something that is that is that is handed down and and i think that the fact that they use that as a particular plot about kevin costner's character making mm-hmm amends with his father uh, i think yeah. it was a very interesting way to like bridge that that whole sense of what generational baseball is uh right or how generational it is um right and plus in the, the process the fr- freaking out almost every person in the world about entering a cornfield Cor- cornfield <laughs> yes well, I, I I think it's a little better than Children of the Corn, from what I understand. <laughs> where like, hey, at least if I'm hearing a voice that just says, "Hey, build it, and they will come," be like, "Build what?" Uh, I don't know. Just just build it, and then you get a vision of a baseball field. I'm like, okay, this isn't some sort of alien that's about to hack off my limb. Okay, or children yeah. who want to you know eat me alive or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm a little less um, concerned, though. Yes, it is a little uh, uh, somewhat frightening. Yeah. Um, like almost comically so, especially yeah. like I think Costner did a good job. He's like, "All right, what do you want, man?" Yeah, it it is a movie that I don't feel it doesn't insist upon itself when it comes to no, no, yeah, it doesn't insist upon it. It doesn't really dig into what the whole cornfield thing is, and it doesn't yeah. have to. It honestly yeah. doesn't have to. I love that it, they just kind of leave that as what yeah. it is. They don't yeah. feel like they have to over explain it or yeah. like rationalize it in any way. It's just kind it of just this, is. like, yeah, it just is. It, I like that. I was once told that it was probably one of the was one of the best modern American fairy tales. Um, mm. and, 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 and someone once told me about the whole essence of, like, it's interesting if you look at it from a faith standpoint. Mm-hmm. Just, like, the, the not even, like, like, not like, not a Christian faith per se, but, like, mm-hmm. just the essence of having faith in, like, I don't know if this is going to happen. I am going out on a limb, hacking down my corn, <laughs> yeah, right. killing the soil to do what? You're gonna make you know you're gonna plant soybeans or something? No, I'm gonna make a baseball field. Okay, uh, come, come again. You're gonna build <laughs> yeah. a, a what? 
aware. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's, but I love that moment in that movie, and it's weird realizing like oh, I'm not far off from this guy, where he has that uh, that that discussion with his wife about why he wants to build the field, and and he says I'm 36 years old, and I'm and he says something like I'm I'm and I'm scared to death of becoming my father, who never took a risk, or something who who, who never had a dream that he followed with all his life or some, something along those lines, and yeah. I think he realized that he had to step out in faith to be like okay i've been told i've I've been granted this vision i don't Mm -hmm. understand it it doesn't make any sense but Mm -hmm. yet it's there i can't deny that this happened to me um and and to see like how that happens and even it happens with james Earl jones later when when uh when uh when they're traveling to the wherever chisel minnesota to find moonlight graham Mm -hmm. and there's that moment when they're in the hotel room and and costner's character like has a newspaper and he's like dude do you know you're you're missing in boston and so Mm -hmm. he's like oh crap i gotta i gotta call my son so he picks up the phone and there's that great little moment where he kind of looks at you know he just kind of looks over because costner's left and he and and jones kind of chuckles and he goes (laughs) what do i tell him (laughs) yeah right and it's that like you can't you can't explain it, and yet right. it's it it is. Um, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what yeah. I love uh, about that because uh, it doesn't. It's not meant to be a comedy. It's not meant to be uh, uh, something about someone winning a game. Like that's a weird thing too. It's like one of the first, mm-hmm. one of the few baseball movies I know that has nothing to do with winning a game, right? Or or a series or or. That's know. a good point. Yeah, it's a it's it's one of the. F- very few sports movies that it's not really would you consider it a sports movie even yeah i, I would consider okay. it a sports movie but it's a it sports has, movie but it has nothing to do with win or lose or even how you play the game like it's not it's not about the lessons learned and losing a game or anything it's it's all about the the community around or not the community i guess but the the philosophy really around baseball it's like i think yeah yeah and and that's the family aspect of yeah. it and the yeah. generational yeah, the family, aspect yeah. of it yeah that's the i think that's the that's the secret you have you have discovered the secret to what i think makes a good baseball movie is a baseball movie is a great baseball movie when it has nothing to do with baseball <laughs> yeah right and the well, most and the two yeah yeah i don't even think it's like a marketing thing i feel like it's just a natural aspect of the game that it it just incorporates that mindset of like hey like we're just all here to like hang out have a good time like throw a ball around and like have fun together you know like let's yeah. let's play a game you know yeah. where every other sport it it feels like has like evolved into this like win or lose or die trying <laughs> you know um and not, and you not that baseball some... is immune from that but <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah. However, yeah. however, however, you touch on something that's very unique to baseball, and and I and I remember thinking about this for 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 uh, uh, years after graduating from high school and getting into college, and and you know, most more often than not, it was basketball, it was football, mm-hmm. maybe lacrosse, and people would mm-hmm. be like, baseball, Ugh, baseball is boring. Who would want to watch baseball? Yeah. You know, kind of right, yada yada yada, right. Um, but I, I thought more about baseball. And you know what's so fascinating about that game is that it is the only major professional sport that is outside the realm of time. Right. Yeah. So like right. like like it, it, a team sport, there's golf and tennis, but like, you know, those are basically it's one on one or or against yourself, which is yeah, um, right. crazy about golf, which is cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah. uh, 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 baseball is a game of true accomplishment. Like in order to win, you have to defeat your enemy. Mm-hmm. You cannot rely on time to slowly but surely, you know, you know, yeah, squeeze you them out it. until they right. You can't. Yeah. So, like for instance, if it's the Lakers versus the Timberwolves, mm-hmm. you're up by 25 points. LeBron is at the helm. There's no way that the, the Timberwolves are going to come back. Like it's right. done. And there's like two minutes left in the game. Tw- down right. by 25 points. It ain't happening. Now, right. If you are down, and this happened like a couple years ago, the Mets were beating the Nationals. I think it was like seven to one in the bottom of the the ninth, and the Nationals mm-hmm. scored like eight runs and came back to win. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, you have you have to beat you have to beat the team. You have to get three outs, and no matter what, yeah. you have to get three outs. Um, yeah. And and I and I 
and I like to say to people where it's it's not um it's not about the speed that's interesting about baseball. It's the drama because so much mm-hmm. can happen within that kind of thing. So mm-hmm. in talking about like what Field of Dreams is like you're saying, like the drama is the relationships. It's not it in, in this case, like the 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 it's not about the speed of baseball. If anything, like baseball is so uh, we, we are gifted to have a sport that's lasted so long and, and frankly unchanged over the course of a history of America where it's, you know, we're kind of like Las Vegas. We just love, you know, tearing it down, building something new, tearing it down, yeah. building something new. Yeah, baseball still around. It's kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah, so. I, the top of my list for movies. Yeah. what do you got? Um, I feel like follows that same philosophy, right? I feel the dreams was a close second. The movie that spoke to me the most was Sandlot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good one. Which, yeah, which does it does the same thing, right? It's it's a movie about baseball, but it's not about baseball, which. Weirdly enough, James Earl Jones is in as well. He's in both I, of them. It's <laughs> just now hitting me. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. I never put that together until no, literally no, just never, now. Ne- nor did I until now. That's funny. <laughs> it's the same um, universe. Sandlot's a good choice. What what uh yeah, mm-hmm. give me some give me some things about Sandlot well, that you It's love. kind of the same stuff that you were talking about. It's 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 the it's the family aspect, right? Because the, the whole the whole catalyst is the, the Babe Ruth baseball that the, yeah. the, the I forget um, Smalls. I don't know his real name, but he he steals Kill from me, Smalls. <laughs> yeah, he steals from his father, right? Mm-hmm. So there's this generational concept, the same as if with Field of Dreams, right? Like there's it's it baseball is in the family. Baseball is a beloved kind of pastime that, and there's this ritual and there's this respect there that is violated, right? Because the kid wants to make friends more than he res- kind of respects the, the history the behind the ball. Right. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's a bigger lesson in, in all of, in every movie that's about sports. Right. It, right. None of it really hits home like field of dreams or, Sa- or Sandlot where I feel like it just so seamlessly connects with each other. Right. The, the group of friends that find themselves in, in a, in a situation where they have to, you know, they have they're they're connected by their love of the game and they're connected by the fact that they just need to get this baseball to keep playing baseball <laughs> you know like it's such a great concept and it yeah you know you and i are both narrative thinkers right like we know that we know that you have to have a group of characters that work well together Oh, yeah. And yeah. baseball, like you said in la- the last episode, or maybe the maybe it was the episode before that, but I can't remember. Um, baseball lends itself to a lot of different types of characters, right? Yep. You have a lot of different personalities that really contribute to the game as a whole, right? Yep. It's not as limited as a, in a as as a physical sport as other sports are. So I think it lends itself to a better story overall. Um, when it comes to, you know, a story like that, like Sandlot, it made the top of my list. Number one, just because I loved watching it as a kid. And number two, just because I think, I think it pulls together the, 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 the same, the same concepts we're talking about with field dreams, the, the family generational aspect of the game, the love of the game, plus the, the narrative aspect that every story needs to really drive it home, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, it for me, I feel like it did it better than Field of Dreams did. So that's why it's... So a really excellent top. choice. There is something with baseball where it's like, yeah, it really does bring all kinds of people together. And, and the Sandlot does a really good job in doing that. I think mainly because that kid doesn't know how to play. Oh, yeah. And yet he can learn. Yeah. And and that's that's something I think about baseball, where you because it's not completely dependent upon quickness, mm-hmm. or or brute strength, you you have the ability to find different things that you can be good at, even if you're not particularly strong, tall, you know, whatever. 
Um, right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Good, good choice. Good choice, man. Yeah. What were some like honorable mentions for you? Anything else that, that uh, you remember? F- Forty two for sure okay. was yeah. was an honorable mention, which isn't isn't a isn't a documentary, right? It's, no, it's it is not. It's a, it re- is a drama. This is drama. Okay. It's a reinterpretation. Yeah. They they take yeah. some liberties, but uh I thought in particular Chadwick Boseman obviously shines as Jackie, but mm-hmm. Harrison Ford does a really good job as Branch Ricky. Oh, I didn't even know Harrison that. Ford was in that. Yeah, yeah huh. he's the owner and he's kind of this wise cracking, uh, uh uh really tough as nails guy. Okay. And he has a lot of very funny lines uh about how he kind of essentially exposes the inherent uh kind of uh racism or or at the very least exclusion that a lot of these owners just kind of have uh, without mm-hmm. actually facing it and yeah. um and and there's this whole thing where uh where Harrison Ford is like well uh, you know I want to sell more tickets and if I get him on the board it means more people from Brooklyn will buy more tickets and I'm a Methodist and well Jackie's a Methodist and uh yeah so we're both Methodists <laughs> like like there's like this like so spot fun. on Harrison Ford yeah. and yeah spot on <laughs> thank you, thank you. um so he, uh, yeah, but he does a he does a good job. So I'm I've been um, uh, uh, that one I I really enjoyed Moneyball. I really enjoyed. I thought that was Moneyball's really, on my list too. Yeah, that was fun. Though I I I I somewhat I sometimes debate upon the uh, the 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 health of of that kind of style of of baseball ism as a as a philosophy about you know essentially buying according to statistics. But um, right, yeah, just kind of plain based off of strictly statistics instead of right. yeah right um another one that i really enjoyed is at least as a child though i don't know how it has aged is angels in the outfield uh aka yep. all 90s 20 uh, 2000s hollywood stars as young children or, yeah. and or young adults like matthew mcconaughey yeah. joseph gordon levitt is in there yeah kind of yeah okay yeah um <laughs> um yeah i'd say i'd say those are mine that i can at least think of right off the yeah. bat so more may come later <laughs> i do that i just did that the other day um there's a guy at work that was worried he had something coming up that he was worried about it was like a meeting or something he had to report and i looked I, I found out I work in a call center, so it's a big room. So I found out where he was and I was like, hey, stand up. And he stood up. He's like looking around and I stood up and I go. <laughs> it's kind of like my universal way of saying, I believe in you. You know, I believe. <laughs> like you can believe. do it. <laughs> so I wave my arms. And, do you think. Um, you- oh, go ahead. Sorry. 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 Well, I, yeah, I don't know if anybody gets it. That's the thing. <laughs> It's like it's a toss up because if you're not if you weren't born in the 90s, then odds are you probably don't get understand what I'm doing. <laughs> well, so. well, my 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 one my question is like if you did it at a Detroit baseball game or or, or you know, <laughs> Florida, like would people join along and they'd be like, no, no, we're not doing what yeah, the angels right. do. Yeah, that's an angels thing. That's not what we do. This is, yeah. this is the tiger thing. <laughs> That's I don't true. know what the athletics that's a great, do. In, in, that's, in a Oakland, great, that's a great observation, though. If he if he would if he played for any other team, <laughs> or sorry, if he if he was whatever he was for any other team, um, what would the signal be? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, Lord, Lord help him if it's the Dodgers, because I feel like it'd just yeah. be everyone like running around the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Or the Nationals? No idea. What do you yeah. do as the Nationals? Prince seems pretty so. Sole- <laughs> Pledge allegiance. Well, yeah. well, we know what we do in Philly, though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a gesture that we can't do on the. Yeah. We, that's a gesture that we can't do on this show. <laughs> <laughs> that's the oh, Philly. Man. I've been to the. I've been to the Philly Stadium. I've been to a game there. It's it's. Those fans, Philadelphia fans, are a different breed of fans, regardless of what sport it is. It's, um, yikes! Goodness gracious! I, I, I'm glad I was there as a Phillies fan, at least dressed as a Phillies fan. Um, but yeah, um, there was some, yeah. I mean, there's they threw snowballs at Santa Claus. Goodness gracious! That's <laughs> that's, that's the type of fan base that we're talking about. And wait, if you. Bigger question: Snowballs, yeah. Snowballs for baseball? No, sorry, I'm talking about football. Um, oh, okay. Phillies right. fan. There's a famous Philadelphia 
Eagles game where the fans threw <laughs> snowballs at, at Santa Claus. Oh, man. Um, Moneyball was on my list, too. Um, good. Good choice. There's something about that movie that really... It's kind of summarized in the end of that movie where... Um, what's his name? Jonah Jonah Hill, right? Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, when he's watching this this film of the, the batter, this like overweight, <laughs> big... This big guy that's like hitting, he's watching film, right? It's towards the end of the movie, and he brings Brad Pitt into this film watching room, and they're watching this film. And the guy hits the ball, and he's rounding first, and he falls and trips, and he starts crawling back to home, back to the first base, not realizing it's kind of embarrassing, right? He trips and falls, and he's kind of embarrassed and crawling back to the first base, and then doesn't even realize he hit a home run (laughs) like you know like that's that kind of summarizes that movie so well that scene by itself i think is why i watched that movie so much because it Mm -hmm. it's such a great metaphor so anyway that's that's kind of why i returned to moneyball a lot um i did also write down um a league of their own (laughs) Mm. uh, with tom hanks and 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 an all-star cast my wife and I, in, in preparation for this, we were looking into a league, a league of their own and the history of it. And obviously, it's a story of World War II, which is kind of a spillover from from last month's episode with Rob. Um, I love the story. And obviously, it's the iconic, there's no crying in baseball line from Tom Hanks um, is, is great. Um, but but in, in reality, the history of all of that is pretty cool just by itself. You know, the yeah. fact that the fact that we had we had a lot of um and Rob and I talked about this last month the, the World War 2 was a war that involved everybody right mm-hmm. and it's interesting just to see the the ripple effect of all of that right even mm-hmm. coming into baseball where we have these female baseball players coming in and really kind of taking over the show and being the source of entertainment and keeping the sport alive while these while these people are away and that's something that's so rich about baseball history is that it's so intertwined with American history since the Civil War, where almost, I mean, case in point, almost every single societal advance in some capacity has somehow involved baseball for the most part in order to see that happen. Um, mm-hmm. if, I mean, heck, you, could, you can see that with, with, um, uh, with women playing there. Um, I think about Jackie Robinson, uh, the fact that he his his drafting into the Dodgers predated the civil rights movement by almost two decades. Um, mm-hmm. And yet he was also involved with that, you know, in the 60s. Um, yeah. Last one I'll add, um, which mm-hmm. is also about family and doesn't mm-hmm. have to do with winning a game is the rookie. I love yep. the rookie. Uh, yeah. And for those of you guys who haven't seen it, it's Dennis Quaid. Uh, he plays mm-hmm. a older um ball player who almost went pro didn't end up coaching in high school taught taught in texas i guess uh, mm-hmm. and then ended up deciding that hey i'm gonna actually give it a shot and he i think he played for the was he the rays or the rangers or the i forget who but um yeah uh, i forget too uh but uh it's based on a true story and he uh played for a couple of years but yeah he was uh the rookie he mm-hmm. was one of the oldest uh rookies i think at the time um which was uh but it's a movie all about family and in the midst of that. It's it's really endearing because he's, you know, a father of, you know, an eight, nine year old kid. Um mm-hmm. and um yeah, it's it's uh it's quite yeah. a it's quite a story. I only had one other honorable mention that I need to mention, and mm-hmm. it's it's called Take Me Out to the Ball Game. It's a musical. <laughs> I grew up as a Gene Kelly fan who was a, a song and dance guy. <laughs> he was, he's a, a famous tap dancer and he's in a lot of musicals. Singing in the Rain is the most famous one. But uh, he did a few musicals with Frank Sinatra and Take Me Out to the Ball Game was one of them. Nice. Um, it was one of my favorite musicals growing up and obviously circles around baseball. They're... Um, the the famous song is O'Brien to Ryan to Goldberg. So their famous uh triple play or sorry, not triple play, double play. Um anyway, uh <laughs> famous musical uh with Gene Kelly. Go check it out. It's for, for those in our younger audience, a musical is when you sing a song yeah. 
during the right. movie. And and for those right. who are even younger, a movie is is a stream of narrative <laughs> that lasts for more than ten seconds. <laughs> Sorry, uh, that's 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 the cynic in me. It's not a TikTok. It's like video, a really, guys. it's like a really long TikTok video. Yeah, it's like really <laughs> long, not on repeat, and all original content. So you should oh, check it out, man. Yeah, yeah. Take me out to the ball game if you like. If you like really, if you like really old movies, <laughs> that's 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 one classic. Thing. You're, ta- yeah. you're that's the word you're looking for. You're classic. looking for a classic yeah. time yeah. to the ball game. Yeah, check it out. Um. I I I'm so happy to share, and I'm actually, I'm kind of upset to share this. But worst movies, baseball movies that I feel like are out there, um, because I'm such an Air Bud fan, I love the original Air Bud movie where the dog plays basketball. You can't beat it. It's such a, it's such a good movie. I'm so upset that they took it to this level where we have Air Bud seventh inning fetch. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh airbud seventh inning fetch uh Bad if dog. you have if, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's a great summary <laughs> um that's, that's honestly on it honest <laughs> it's your critique bad dog bad dog <laughs> sit boo boo sit um <laughs> <laughs> um oh, honestly on a, i mean I, okay I, obviously the the original movie where the dog can play basketball is a little far-fetched i get that it that's not the point at the end of air Bud with the basketball he doesn't end up playing with the like los angeles lakers and becoming the mvp of the league Wait, at the end of the seventh inning fetch seventh inning fetch the ending buddy the dog is signed by the Anaheim Angels to play first base and wins the World Series MVP. <laughs> A dog sponsored by Disney. <laughs> well, like, you know the Angels, you know the Angels are owned by Disney, right? I know, I didn't know that. Well, like, like, like that's that's my favorite too. Is thinking like, okay, so they got they got angels in the outfield, and they have a dog in the infield. Who's okay. catcher? Who's yeah, catcher? <laughs> yeah, right. Just come up with a name. We'll 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 do it. Goofy. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that that makes that makes one of the top. Um, that sorry, I'm just gonna read another one. Rookie of the yep. year. I wasn't. I didn't think. Oh yeah, that one was. Honestly, it's all well and good until the final pitch. <laughs> and if you don't remember, this is the classic scene where he looks, t- he peels off the thing on his glove, realizes his glove or something or other has something to do with his mom. I don't remember. He looks to his mom in the stands who he can't talk to because he's on the pitching mound. <laughs> Somehow they have this like nonverbal conversation, but verbal because you can read it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> And she goes, and she does this a classic. She goes, just float it. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole basis of the story is this kid has broken his arm, and somehow in the reconstruction phase of breaking his arm, he becomes this major league pitcher because he can like snap his arm really fast. <laughs> and this something, and, and at the very end of the movie, sorry, no spoilers, but spoilers. Um, he has a similar incident where he loses his ability to throw the ball really fast, but now he's the, now he's like the the pitcher for the the Chicago Cubs. So, like he looks to his mom in the stand. He's a kid. He's like thirteen years old. Looks to his mom in the stands, and she's just like, "Just float it, just just do that." So he goes all out with the float it mentality and decides he's just going to like underhand pitch this. <laughs> um, Super change up. <laughs> I mean, we're talking like fifteen mile per hour, <laughs> like change up that that he just floats <laughs> and ends up striking the guy out because it was so unexpected. Anyway, that's, that's kind of those. Those were two movies that I just feel like they don't do the the game of baseball any justice. <laughs> now I'm I'm opinion. trying to remember. Well, I I think my pick would probably be Angels in the Outfield, if only because I don't I have a sense that it has not aged well. I think. Oh really? But I, I could I could be wrong. 
I didn't really see many bad baseball movies, at least growing up, that I that at least that I can remember. I'll give you some more time because I have a third movie. <laughs> it's it's a little movie called Ed in nineteen ninety six. Oh, was that with a monkey? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I remember seeing trailers of that and being, nope. <laughs> yeah. Nope. It's starring Matt LeBlanc. Um, there's not a lot more that needs to be said about that. It's a, it's a, it's a monkey playing baseball is what the movie's about. And it's a relationship between Matt LeBlanc and Ed. And the, mon- and the monkey. The monkey. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of any. However, uh, I do see one on this list, and it's called Battlefield Baseball, which looks like a classic bad movie it is a horror movie okay, well, it's a so horror is, movie yeah all right so you ready okay yeah um battlefield baseball is a tough game it doesn't end until all the members on the opponent uh, on the opposing team are dead in this game the the guido high team is composed of blue faced zombies and their opponents on the Cedo high <laughs> team know they don't have a chance at beating them unless they can bring back a star pitcher who has a lethal pitch called the Super Tornado. Okay. <laughs> directed <laughs> Wow, that was uh in 2000 directed in 2003 it has a 5.8 on on IMDb. I've seen worse. <laughs> yeah. If there was a baseball story that you could tell yeah, that hasn't been made. What would you do? Um, I did come across a story about uh Jackie Mitchell, a tall left-handed 17-year-old in 1931 who established herself basically as a baseball legend by st- um striking out both Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig in the same game. Hmm. While she was pitching for a semi-pro team in Chattanooga, she was tasked with facing both Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, and she struck both of them out, mm. the Babe and Lou Gehrig. Um, cool. I can't strike out Babe Ruth <laughs> or Lou Gehrig. Like, who was who was this who was this female ball player um, that that struck out the great Bambino? Yeah, that'd be cool. At least on my end, I think I would have to go with the. Uh, no one ever knows any stories about the Negro Leagues, and I'd love to. Mm. I'd love to know, like Satchel Paige or, or any of these, any of these guys that were were considered, frankly, as good if not better than Babe or Gehrig, mm-hmm. um, but that were on a more of a smaller market audience, and they just never, they just never got right. well known. Um, right. Yeah, and I've always wondered, like. It's interesting that once when Jackie got drafted and, and, and signed for the Dodgers and more players from the Negro Leagues ended up playing for the MLB and then the Negro Leagues went to, you know, they, they, they closed, they, they shut down, they folded. Um, that part of the story is always interesting to me, too. The fact that it was, it was hampered by financial difficulties, I think, as an organization, I think. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like the ML, like the MLB era quickly like made things I think close down faster with that, um, and it's it's interesting at at the we the MLB definitely benefited more from gaining those players to have them play, and it definitely came at the cost of of the of the Negro leagues. Um, so like that would to me is always an interesting that would be an interesting narrative to talk about just in general i don't know the exact players but like just knowing that like oh yeah like there were these team there were these cities that had these teams the indianapolis uh clowns was was one um no way but the clowns yeah yeah the clowns um uh and uh, uh i think it was the new york cubans was was one of theirs there's all kinds of really interesting ones so it's just it's it's, it's interesting knowing that there were these fields that had these games and you know family yeah. came and saw the games and and you know that kind of thing and now it's all yeah. you know history and gone but like it, it was there it existed so i would be very curious to you know yeah know about the clowns like why'd you name them the clowns of all of all things so this is another question that i should have asked you about w- during the the pitch and catch episode what is it about baseball and socks the color of your socks that's so important because not when we're talking about, I'll just tie this in with everything here. So we talked about 
we talked about a league of their own. We talked about the the fe- the, the female baseball mm-hmm. replacements. Basically, there was a there was a f- uh, a female all or all girls type of league that happened that existed back in the 40s or 50s, some, that time frame. And in South Bend specifically, South Bend, Indiana, where I have a history, um, I lived there for a little while, so my wife is from, um, the girls team there, there was a very successful girls team there that was called the Blue Sox. And honestly, <laughs> we have the white, the Chicago White Sox, the Boston Red Sox. Red Sox, yep. And then I'm, I'm looking up the, the Negro League teams. I do see the Montgomery Gray Sox. Huh? I just... And there the should Los be Angeles the White Sox. White Sox. There's also the Durham uh, Black Sox, uh, I think, uh, for a time. I think. Is it? <laughs> it's. It just seems so interesting to me. This. 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 Uh, this obsession with the color of of White Sox. Hey, well, like, okay. So this is my theory. So it also was the red stock. They're all spelled with X. Yep. Sorry, of, I didn't mean to interrupt. But no, they're no, all no, spelled with X. Yeah. Yeah. Every single is. last one of them. Yeah, it's great. Simple. Okay. It's it's, uh, right, it's two less ahead. letters you have to they have to print on your shirt. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, well, the 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 Cincinnati Reds used to be the Red Stockings as well, so you basically oh. had that in there. Um, okay. My theory is is because the socks were such a distinguished part of the uniform back in the day. You know, like they were up to the calf. You know, kind of thing. Um, no, like it's it's so different. Like if you look at fielders now, they don't really show the socks that prominently. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that's part of it, where it just came from that thing. And then, I mean, heck, you yourself uh, said, too, where, uh, you know, people are superstitious about their clothes, about washing their socks. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's where it came from. It's just Uh, weird. Yeah. The most epic, though, one I remember ever seeing was 2004 Championship Series when Kurt Schilling was the pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, and he had just had surgery on his on his ankle like a, a couple weeks ago. And while he was pitching, the stitch, uh, like, like, I guess, tore a little bit. So all of a mm-hmm. sudden, his sock turned blood red. Like, it actually became a red sock. And, and, really? like, and the cameras are yeah. zooming in on it. And, you know, oh, this is amazing, you know, kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but, like, legend come to life, man. That, like I said, it, it, baseball is the sport of legends. Um, yeah. So it just adds to the... Uh, yeah, there's also the Bowie Bay Sox, which is a, a, a minor league team, I think. There's also an obsession, it's I guess, in the Negro League about giants. You have the the Birmingham Giants. Yep. You have the the Ansonia Cuban Giants, mm-hmm. the Washington Elite Giants, mm-hmm. the <laughs> the Chicago American Giants, the Chicago Columbia Giants, the Chicago Giants, the Leland Giants. The Coles American Giants, um, the Miami Giants, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of, teams a lot of that, giants, yeah, a lot of giants, giants and socks, which kind of paints the picture of just a big sock. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I want the uh, the Indianapolis Giant socks. You ever heard of the Red Sox? <laughs> Yeah, and, Which, the, and the White Sox. No, but giant everybody, socks. everybody is so comfortable talking about these giant socks. But I mean, there's you just know that there's giant, there's giant pairs of underwear out there somewhere too. <laughs> <laughs> that is uncomfortable. Well, or or my my personal favorite is uh, the Indianapolis sock giants. <laughs> just these giants sock. made of socks everywhere. Yeah, around. yeah. They're they're oh, they're uh, they're their number one weapon against them is detergent. <laughs> Oh man, we didn't do our seventh inning stretch this episode. Do you want to? Do you want to stretch? We'll just, All right, together. Here. Dum 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 dum. dum, dum, dum. Oh, 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 well done. Sung All right. <laughs> All right. Hey guys. 
thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. This has been a fun episode, uh, a fun month of, of shooting with uh, with Alex here. Th- Alex, welcome back again. Glad Thank to you. have you back. Thank you, Rich. Um, it's good to be back. We'll be back next month talking about God knows what. Um, but <laughs> you know what? You'll be here to listen to it. I'm, I'm fairly confident. So um, that wraps up our whole conversation on baseball. Um, I learned a lot, honestly. I really did. So I appreciate I appreciate your insight and uh, and I appreciate every all of you fans out there being patient with me as I as I as I talk about the sport and everything. So, um, so yeah, um, if you didn't get a chance to to see the earlier episodes, go check them out. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, definitely subscribe, guys, if you like the content, if you like what we're doing. Um, click it's a, it's a simple button. It gives you an update on everything that we're posting. We're posting weekly now. So if you want an update on when we post, just click the subscribe button. It's very simple. Just do that, and uh, and you'll get an update every time we post uh, one of our new episodes. So, and you'll be you'll be one of the first people to realize what we're talking about next week. So um, we look forward to that. But until next time, guys, be happy, brew hoppy, and game and on. Game on. Cheers. Cheers. All hail baseball.